sticker we're talking about this time is this feet sticker right here by Coop. I think this is the right way up. I think this is the top. I'm not positive. I'm going off of his signature right there. It seems to be pointing that direction. Coop, I've known about since I think high school. He is kind of a Los Angeles institution. You've probably seen a Coop sticker or a Coop image. Uh, he's famous for the devil head, devil girl in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s. There was a uh, fun kind of hot rod rockabilly scene here in Los Angeles. And his imagery was a huge part of it. You saw these stickers on lots of cars, lots of people, skateboards, things like that. What I've always liked about Coop and Coop's art is he's an artist who has kind of created his own little world. I love artists that create their own kind of cast of characters that all live in this kind of specific world and uh, they all kind of have the same look or they kind of like are into the same things and they just like fit in the same space. Like it's like they all live in the same town, like an artistic Mayberry or something. So Coop has this like huge cast of characters that are like devil guys and devil girls and robots and beautiful curvy women and hot rods and spark plugs and monsters and sci-fi stuff of all different kinds and even the ones that are different they all kind of fit together stylistically and just kind of thematically so that it seems like they all live in this like world together and i really like when artists do that when they kind of create their own little space that's not necessarily referencing stuff you see other places like artists like chris ware is another artist i really love that does it he's kind of created this suburban chicago world of extreme sadness uh or a painter like neo Rausch is another one where all these all his people live in these kind of odd german suburban towns and they they kind of metamorphosize into different shapes sometimes and they all kind of look similar artists like crumb is another one who all his people feel that kind of like gritty downtrodden people that have been <laughs> beaten down by life and slouched over <laughs> Or like uh, Carrie James Marshall's another one. All his like paintings, like seems like everyone kind of has a similar style. Like the way they dress or the way they kind of stand, the way they look and like, they just all feel like they live in the same world. Coop is great at drawing period. I want to talk briefly about Coop's uh, ability at drawing. Cause I, years ago, this is probably like five years ago. He had a show in Chinatown where you could see um, like his originals and stuff. And his ability to draw and paint with ink and a brush is honestly pretty upsetting. He rules at it. If you've looked at any, if you look at any of his like figurative stuff, like the people he draws, like the the, the women and the, the kind of pinup girl stuff, you can tell already he is really good at drawing the human figure. But where I really found out how good he was is his hand-drawn type. If you've ever drawn type by hand and tried to do it really clean with ink you know that it is absolute torture it has to be so exact you have to get it so right or it looks like absolute shit because everyone knows what letters are supposed to look like everyone knows what a b is supposed to look like so if your b sucks everyone can tell and i got up close to some of his originals and the type was so good it literally bothered me a little because I've done it, I'm pretty good at it, but he's way better at it. I also remember he had a show years and years ago at La Luz de Jesus, or Waco if you want to call it that too, of these huge wooden paintings of pinup girls, and they were painted with uh, one-shot enamel, which is what pinstripers use to paint cars. And there's a reason they call it one-shot, because you literally have one try to get the line right. And if you mess it up, you kind of can't fix it. You, It's one, they use this long ass, pinstriping brush and you just have to do it perfectly one time and it is awful it's awful i've tried to do it i tried to pinstripe a lunchbox i was i was not good at it the people that are good at it it is truly a, a shocking ability of precision regardless if you're not into hot rods if you're not into pinup art if you're not into devils or flames or any of that stuff just the fact that 
his draftsman ability is a thing anyone I think can appreciate. He can just straight up draw. He's great at hair. That's what I really love about his art is like he takes the same kind of time with a spark plug that he does with a face or a body or anything like that. He reminds me in that way of who I, one of my favorite artists of all time, Tom of Finland. And both of them, you can k kind of get categorized as like erotic art, which I don't like the term erotic art because it's just... Imagery that is kind of can be sexual, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's erotic. Just because something's referencing sex, sex, sorry. just because something's referencing sex in any way, doesn't necessarily... Just because something's referencing sex, I don't think it means it's erotic. That doesn't mean you find it erotic. It just has to do with sex. And what I like about Coop and Tom of Finland is they take the same amount of time and care with all the elements in the image that they do with the primary image. Tom of Finland, takes as much time with the tree behind the two guys that he does with the two guys. Like the boot and the helmet and the sunglasses are drawn with as much care as any of the body parts or the faces. And a lot of times in figurative art that deals with like sex or whatever, people tend to just focus on the sexy parts and they kind of get a little lazy with the stuff in the background. And I really like when people take the same amount of care with everything because it just creates this perfectly beautiful full image and it makes it feel more like realistic. It feels like an actual place and an actual moment and that to me is like way more interesting. This sticker, it's feet, right? It's clearly referencing foot fetish. I don't have a foot fetish at all. Feet are not my thing. And what I find amazing is because I don't have a fetish for that, this sticker is just a good drawing. Done in ink, I think it's a digital printed sticker. It's like probably about three color. There's, there's a rim light on one of the heels. It's got red toenails. And to me, it's just a drawing of feet. So what I think is so funny and brilliant is the amount of kink you get from this is all up to you. He just drew some feet and what it does to you has nothing to do with him. It only has to do with you and how you feel about feet. So in a weird way, I'm creating the narrative of this image and my narrative is it's only feet, but there's a lot of people out there who their narrative is going to be completely different when it comes to this image. And I think that is so smart and it, there's no way it's an accident. Coop's a smart dude. He's also really funny. So the fact that he knew exactly what he was doing when he made this sticker and to make a sticker of feet also is hilarious. When you think about just what stickers usually are, they're usually just logos and skateboarding and things like that. Like, no, this is just feet. It bears mentioning that Coop was very ahead of the curve when it came to representing curvy women. I, I mean, I used to go to a lot, I would go to his shows when he'd have one in LA and you know, he, draw, he draws and paints these big images of beautiful curvy women and not a lot of people were doing that. The people that were representing attractive women in art, all of them kind of looked the same. They all had the same kind of figure. And he, to me, was one of the only ones representing women that looked different than that and doing it in a way that was clearly really like reverential to that look. And I noticed that women that look like that would show up to the shows and were like really excited and stoked on what he was doing. And I don't know that he's ever gotten credit for, for being kind of ahead of that curve. This is way before that like Dove commercial. Like he was showing this stuff a long time ago. I always thought that was cool. There's also something really romantic. I, this is his wife's feet, I believe. That's like the sweetest thing. He just made a sticker of his wife's feet because he loves his wife and he loves her feet. And that's really cute for the rest of her life. She has this little logo of how much her husband is down for her feet. That's beautiful for being adult about the way love works and long-term <laughs> relationships that's really cute also it, it it should be said most artists avoid feet like the plague you rarely see well done feet in art you just people just avoid them it's like the last thing you learn to draw no one bothers learning feet ever because you rarely see them usually you cut off 
people at the waist. If you're doing portraits, you rarely see below the waist. Even when people are standing, you usually put shoes on them. If there's a nude, sure, you see the feet, but usually they're kind of tucked under and people get really lazy when it comes to the toes. This is not lazy at all. This is the everything about of feet you need to see. And I'm just a huge fan of it. And uh, that is why, wait, Coop makes tons of stuff you can buy. He makes tons of stickers, tons of t-shirts. You can get his art done on anything. You go to his website, artofcoop.com. This is what I've said uh, in other places, but this is the, these are the people you should buy stuff from. You could go to the mall and buy some shirt of a devil guy head or a devil girl that's just a, someone ripping Coop off, or you could buy from him, same price. These are the people you should buy it from. Buy from the actual artist. Don't buy from the people that are ripping those people off. So, artofcoop.com. This sticker rules. That is why it is one of my favorite stickers.